I was totally obsessed with <laughs> playing the president. I, I didn't stop thinking about it. The moment I read for the part, I was I was just obsessed with the idea of of, of playing the president. Could you just tell us a bit about the show in your own words? Hmm. Well, it's a political thriller that just doesn't stop. It takes you on a crazy magic carpet ride that uh, unfolds in a thrills and chills kind of a way. It was so well written, and I'm so pleased that it's even better in its manifestation as it came out on screen. So it's uh, an exciting ride. That's great. Um, how exciting was it to hear that the show had been renewed so quickly? I mean, that's that's what we all hoped for. And um, it was the fact that it happened so fast, though, was uh, was totally exciting. It's uh, it's a coup to Sean Ryan, who wrote it and all the writers who were on it. And of course, crew and and everyone involved. But uh, yeah, it's it's great news. In your opinion, what is it about the night agent that has people so captivated? What is drawing people in? Well, it's a great story. The way that the, the Sean Ryan and his writing team crafted it is things unfold in a totally exciting way. It's a political thriller. It's set around the White House. And, you know, I don't think that we've seen that much out there lately that is around the White House. One of the reasons I think 24 was so successful is it was close to home. You know, it was based on American politics or in or around American, American politics. And and that has, I think, a world interest. And, and so is the night agent. And just the way it catches you in the beginning and then keeps you freaked out and on the edge of your seat <laughs> for the entire ride also makes it impossible to turn off. Great. Um, and how did you approach playing a role like the president of the United States, particularly that of a female president? I was totally obsessed with <laughs> playing the president. I, I didn't stop thinking about it. The moment I read for the part, I was, I was just obsessed with the idea of, of, of playing the president, you know, it, it's so hard to believe. And, and I don't think, I, I, I don't think it's too far off, but it's sort of, it's sort of bizarre that we're in this time where there hasn't been a female president yet. It's, it's bizarre and it's coming. And uh, we're going to look back at the time where there wasn't a female president and think, what were we thinking? We're already thinking that we're just not there yet. And so being able to be in fantasy, that person felt essential to like my being. And I was, like I said, obsessed. I read, I read about uh, Lincoln a lot, who was one of my personal favorites. I read, and I read a lot of Obama's stuff who's also a fake. Um, for me, I wanted to be president of the good, president who has a vision and leads the world to a better place. So I wanted to study presidents who did that too. So that was my interior life. I, I you know, I, I just, uh, I, I really felt like I pretended to be the president in such a total way in, in my being, it was wholly exciting. Was there any other research involved? Um, you being Canadian, was there any aspects of like the politics or policy or just, uh, you know, the inner workings of government that you need to familiarize yourself with? Well, I lived in LA for years and years and years, and my sister lives in the US and I've spent, you know, I mean, like I said, years and years and years. There. That doesn't mean I know the the political system inside and out, but um, I felt familiar with the differences between the Canadian government system and, and the U.S. government. And um, and yeah, I did do a little extra research on it. And and interestingly enough, my son was studying. Um, we do we did some homeschool because of the pandemic, and so we were studying different tiers of of government and American government as well. So his 
study helped my study. <laughs> and how were you introduced to the role in the show? And were you aware of the novel before you became involved with it? I wasn't. Mm -hmm. I wasn't aware of the novel before I was aware that it was being turned into a a television show. But um, as soon as I was cast, I read the novel. And um, I read the script when I was auditioning for it. And the script, the pilot script was, was in incredible. Um, and I actually uh, auditioned for it, was asked to audition for it when I was on vacation. I was at a friend's wedding in Puerto Rico. <laughs> Oh my God. Just auditioning for something when you're on vacation is the worst. It's just the worst because you have to like mm -hmm. take time away from your friends and your, you know, study your lines. And but you know, so I flew into Puerto Rico the night before the wedding. My dear friend was meeting me. I studied the lines. I literally put the audition down on tape 20 minutes before the wedding started in my hotel room in Puerto Rico and like sent it to my agents and said send it and then ran to the to the uh, wedding and then maybe about a week and a half later or something I found out I got it but I'll tell you it was really interesting also to be in Puerto Rico when I was auditioning for the president of the United States because Puerto Rico is a really interesting place in terms of American politics hmm. so um, I, I spoke to a lot of Puerto Ricans about, which I didn't know very much about before I went there. Mm -hmm. So I spoke to Puerto Ricans with the, the lens of, I'm going to be president of the United States. And what am I going to do about Puerto Rico? Mm -hmm. You know, and that was a, that was a, that was a fascinating beginning for me as putting my, wrapping my head around the idea of playing the president, because there's a lot of stuff going on in Puerto Rico that I would change if I was president, I'll tell you that. Mm -hmm. oh. And you've also appeared on other political thrillers like 24 and Covert Affairs. Um, did that give you a sense of familiarity with the tone of the show, the concept of it, or was there still an adjustment process? Um, well, you know, the, the writers didn't reference 24 like i reference 24 and i i know i'm not alone i've heard other people reference you know um compare the night agent to 24 maybe in pace and and because it's a political thriller but um nobody said we're doing this show and it's like this mm -hmm. um so for me I I didn't think about covert affairs or 24 while I was doing it. I just thought I'm president of the United States and I'm working on this podcast show and uh, how am I going to do my best? Mm. Yeah. That's a great attitude. <laughs> um, do you have a favorite scene that you've done on the show so far? And if so, what? Um, what mm. is it? You know, my favorite would have been the very last scene where I tell Peter that he's going to be a night agent. That's when it comes together. And I felt like, you know, rewarding this man's bravery for mm -hmm. not only saving my life, but saving the country, having the ability to do that as the president. And it felt like that is president of the good. And also just thanking one human to another for saving my life. Felt like it was a really beautiful moment. It's very intense. Yeah. dramatic moment um last weekend you participated in a reading of the wedding party with sandra oh and other national theater school alumni um going back to kind of your beginnings why and how did you decide to become an actor and and go to theater school and mm -hmm. yeah so we all my my class um uh, which is a class of 93 nice 1993 which means <laughs> We graduated 30 years ago, which is insane to think about. We all gathered. We wanted to get together and do this reading of another classmate's play called The Wedding, Wedding Party. Her name is Kristen Thompson, wonderful actress and wonderful playwright. And so Sandra is in our from our class and uh, Patrick Gallagher and so many wonderful other actors who have become writers. And we've this core group of us have, have remained friends. And we wanted to get together and do this play reading and step on stage at the Monument 
National, which is the main stage theater for the National Theater School in Canada. And it's interesting because I thought about it put us back in that place of being 20 years old and what we wanted to do. And, you know, honestly, I think the truth is I just didn't have any other choice. I, I had once I made the decision to be an actor, which was based on I was obsessed with the, the book, The Outsiders, and I read it obsessively by Essie Hinton. And then at that time, I found out they were making a movie of it. And I had this sort of light bulb moment where I realized all this stuff I'm feeling as I'm reading this book, it, there's a place to put it. There's a there's the embodiment of character seemed like it was integral to my being, and of course I didn't con I wasn't conscious of that in the moment. It was just an instinct. But later I see that somehow being an actor is just what I had to do. And I think when people have that sort of inspiration about whatever it is that they want to do, it's not only being an actor or being a doctor or being a whatever you, you a writer, whatever you feel like you need to do, it's set, literally setting them up for this like journey that they're going to go on. And so I just feel like being an actor just set me up to begin my life's journey. It's always so like amazing to hear like how actors get started because I find that whole process just amazing. So um that's just, that's a wonderful answer. <laughs> um, you have a extensive and diverse resume. Um, to what do you credit your enduring success in your profession, your longevity? You don't give up. Mm -hmm. I don't want to give up. So that's also the, the truth. There's more that I want to do. Mm -hmm. That's also the motivating factor. I love what I do. I don't know who I would be if I didn't do this because it's such a guiding light in my life. It's so integral to how I feel and view the world and the lens I look through. But I, I think the essential thing is I just, if you want something, you you just go get it. You can keep going if you don't have it. Great advice. And who are your personal acting inspirations and why? You know, I just saw uh, on the plane back from Montreal, I watched Tar. I hadn't uh, seen it. I mean, I've always loved Kate Blanchett. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like she she was a maestro playing the maestro. It was such a perfect role for her and the way she approached it and uh, was very, very inspiring to me. Mm -hmm. um, so she she is absolutely uh, a personal hero. Um, Meryl Streep also. One of the reasons, not only because they're great actors, one of the reasons that they're, they're personal heroes is they have families. Mm -hmm. And I love the idea of Ida Sun. And I love, I love the idea that we can have balance in this mm -hmm. life. You know, acting, when you're on this journey of being an actor, it can really take you over. It can, like, you, you're, you're forced to be, have your blinkers on as an actor. In my opinion, you, you have to become singularly focused in order to make it happen. In order to be a good actor, in order to find work, in order to do good work. But I, I think it can do a lot of people damage in that then they don't have a very good balance in their life. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, lots of people don't want to have children and they don't, but if it sometimes things get away from people and then they, they don't have children and, or they don't have a relationship or they lose their relationship with their family or their roots. Mm -hmm. And, and then they, they're sort of a bit out of balance. I love this idea of, <laughs> and it is an idea because it's hard to achieve, but of having a balance in Meryl Streep, Kate Blanchett, in my imagination of them, because they have children and families, they have that balance as well as being brilliant actresses. Right. And, and also being older actresses, do you feel that, you know, a lot has been said about Hollywood and, and sexism and ageism? 
and, um, you know, how that has been, you know, such an intrinsic part of the system for so long. Um, do you feel that, that that is something that is finally being chipped away at to some extent? Yeah, I do. I do. I don't think it's finished. Right. I think we're just at the beginning. It's like, you know, having this conversation, it's almost like I can see my future self looking back and going, yeah, remember at that time there hadn't been a female president. We would be able to look back and go, remember, and I'm already saying it, like, remember when we thought we had to be that or behave, or you had to behave that way, or you had to, to put yourself in a position of being more of a supplicant as a woman in a man's world. It's still a man's world. But what's happening, and it's totally thrilling to me, is that women, is that people who, uh, you know, uh, people of all different races, uh, every all different genders, identities are saying, we don't want to fit into whatever idea this is of being this anymore. This is who I am. And I'm not going to pretend to be the perfect little woman. <laughs> anymore because that means I'm going to get cast. Right. We're not going to do it. And the only way that changes is if everybody in all their different ways and their being says, we're not going to do that anymore. Mm-hmm. We're not doing that anymore. And that's not acceptable anymore. That's and that's great. happening. It's really wonderful. It's mm-hmm. time. It's mm-hmm. time. And finally, can you talk about what's coming up next for you and what's next for President Travers on the night agent, if you're able to? Yeah, I I, um, I don't know what's next for President Travers. I know that the writers are in the writing room right now, probably madly writing before the writer's strike happens. So mm-hmm. um, I don't know. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, so I don't know that. But personally, um, I've just finished a film that I'm really excited about uh, called Haley Rose. And we shot it in Nova Scotia and it's fun, funny, sweet film, little indie film that I have very high hopes for. I had a wonderful time shooting it and I saw some of it in ADR. It's really funny and really sweet, kind of a la Wes Anderson feel to it. Um, So I'm excited, really excited for that to come out there in the midst of editing it. And I also just worked on Fargo. Uh, oh, yes. Season. Yeah. And that was amazing. I worked Thank mostly you. with Juno Temple, who oh. was just an absolute angel. That Work. sounds so exciting. I look yeah. forward to all of those, um, especially to just seeing you more in general. Um, again, you are a highlight of the show. So um it is just a privilege to be able to speak with you. And again, thank you so much for taking out the time today. It was a wonderful opportunity. Thank you so much, Kari. My pleasure, Ashley.